All right, sure looks like interest rates and inflation are going up. Stocks are going down. What's this mean? How long is this going to last? Let's talk to David Bonson, managing director of the Bonson Group and author of There's No Free Lunch. David, we're getting screwed by, they're not our friends, OPEC Plus, Russia, Saudis, Iran, Venezuela, and we're not prepared for it. Because we're not producing near to capacity. We're not so, even remotely near capacity. I, I don't have a single good thing to say about OPEC Plus or Saudi, but I don't think they're screwing us. Because we have the ability to turn the production spigots up and we won't do it. And Saudi said, fine, we're not going to do your dirty work for you. Mm. And Biden goes out and fist bumps this guy, asking them to do the production that he won't allow Oklahoma, Texas and other shale patches in America to do. And they wouldn't do it. And they wouldn't. It's not in their economic best interest to do it, right? This economic nationalism thing cuts both ways. Mm -hmm. They got to operate their best interest, and Biden chose to give them the leverage when we had it previously. The thing I'd say about SPR, though, is they stopped taking it down last December. Oil prices stayed around 70, between mm -hmm. 65, 75, mm -hmm. for seven months. So they've just recently come up 30 percent in seven weeks. Um, I believe that that has everything to do with the fact that the, they refused to fill it back up at that low price, that they made a huge mistake mm -hmm. in not acting on filling mm -hmm. it at that time. But I will say I don't think Chairman Powell should talk about oil because it implies that the Fed can do something about that. And we've already basically said the Fed is sort of God over the entire economy. I'm kind of grateful he didn't pretend that the central bank controls The only oil. reason I say it is... No, this is not the Fed's fault, okay? This is the supply side no. energy production fault, and right. it's a stupid uh, Bidenomics fault. Okay, right. get that. But the Fed's going to have to deal with it. The inflation rate is now rising again. It's principally because of energy. No. Uh, that may spill over into food, all right? Whether it spills over into other stuff, I don't know. But in the past, when energy prices have spiked up, this is the 1970s problem particularly, and the Fed didn't take action to offset it. They so-called monetized or accommodated the oil spike. It did spread to inflation across the economy. And that could get us into a lot of trouble. And I wanted to hear Jay Powell say something about that, but he won't. Um, Kevin O'Leary, again, on this show last night, said he thought the Fed's target rate was going to 6%. It's presently 5 and a quarter, 5 and a half. What do you think? I think that's a, a pretty good prediction. And the reason is that as long as the Treasury continues to borrow at the pace they're currently going, interest rates are going to have to go higher. The biggest buyer, or one of the biggest buyers, was the Fed. And they're not now. And, and this is not. a bit. That's this, a key this, point. It's funny. I just right. put this in my commentary today, dividendcafe.com. Thanks for letting me plug myself. <laughs> the Fed's now down a trillion dollars in treasuries on yeah. their balance sheet, and households are up over a trillion. But there's a, it's not apples to apples. And this is what I point out to my clients. The Fed is a non-economic buyer of treasuries. They don't care what the yield is. Households only buy because the yield's juicy. So it is. it costs more money. I don't agree on the six handle coming on the Fed rate, but the reason why is because I'm giving, I'm, I'm a little more cynical about the Fed than I think you and Kevin might be. I think they are a political actor. And no political actor is going to, in election year, let it get to 6%. They have to monetize fiscal. Mm. And, and if I'm wrong, it just simply means the Fed is really being an independent central bank. P forgive me that I don't believe they are. And that we cannot have the fiscal policy we have in this country without a Fed helping accommodate that. I asked you last time you were on uh, how high bond rates were going to go. Mm -hmm. We went through this. And then you said over what period? Yeah, that's right. Between now and the election. So they've gone to four, almost four and a half percent. Right. Um, that's a big jump. That's not good for stocks. It's not good for multiples. That's right. uh, you are a stock market veteran. What, what, what's your read on it now? For, first of all, it is not true what Kevin said, that whenever bond yields go up, stocks go down. It depends why bond yields go up. If bond yields are going up because of good economic growth, uh, like we had certain periods in the 90s, right, the 80s, right. the Real market rates. likes that. Real, Real rates, rates are good. Yes. But I don't think that's the issue That's right not the now, issue right it? now. By the way, the 10-year was at 3.3% in April. Yep. That's not exactly ancient history. Yep. Up 120 basis points. It's up 38 basis points this month. The Dow was down 1.7% this week. That's not a big deal. You don't think it's going to go down more? Oh, I think it very well could. But my point is it won't just be about bond yields. However, right now, that is the issue, the long end of the curve, not the short end. And it's the long end of the curve saying, how long are they going to keep it there? Maybe they don't raise anymore, but if they hold it five and a quarter, when a lot of loans start to reset over the coming years, mm -hmm. that takes a lot of liquidity out. And now you're about to start hearing a lot of talk about something that's been totally ignored for months and months. 
quantitative tightening. Oh, I know. They've gotten away with it. I think it's about to come.